The Edmonton Oilers fall 6-3 to three to the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, in Toronto to kick off a three-game road trip. Tom Gazzola, Dustin Nielsen, YouTube Trev holding things down back at the EST HQ. It's the Oil Stream post-game show live on location at Hudson's White Avenue. There's Lieutenant Eric, uh, yes, having it up for the camera in the window with the commish, Quinn Phillips, who was here on location, still is, and having a great time. I don't think she's leaving anytime soon. I don't think soon, so either. It's, it's 7.54, and uh, despite the results from the game, everybody's having a great time. A huge thank you to the staff, Sarah, and everyone here at uh, Hudson's White. Our uh, first watch party with the listeners and the nasties, and uh, it was absolutely tremendous. Mm. However, Dusty, the team was not able to provide... Uh, that extra boost to make the night even special and kick off the weekend the right way. Yeah, I'd say they probably couldn't provide any boost. No, there was no tonight. boost. Like, there's zero boost. It yeah. was a boostless game from the Edmonton Oilers. And, like, it just, like, blatant. Mistakes. D- mis- yeah, like, decision-making. Yeah. Darnell Nurse on that, I guess it was the first goal. I think I was, yeah, it was maybe it was the first you goal. You were yelling at me from was, across well, the No, bar. that was the Bouchard goal. Oh, right. The first well. one where, like, DeHarnay went into the corner. And then they throw it in front, and nobody's there. And I'm like, well, wait a second. If Dehar is if Dehar is there, where's Nurse? Right. And Nurse is literally just upright, gliding around. You're yes. like, what is going on? Like, I just don't know how you no show the way they no showed yep. on hockey night in Canada in Toronto against the Maple Leafs. And it, look, I said, I told you right before we went on. I said, you know, this isn't the end of the world. No, I think, I think there are some good lessons for this team to learn, considering how good they've been for quite some time. But at the same time, Bouchard is allergic to cont- uh, contact in the corner. He just is. And I, I look, I've been arguing with people on Twitter for the last an hour. He's having a great season. Yes. His analytics are great. His box cars are great. Sure. But you cannot make that play in the corner. Somebody's like, he's been out there for a long time. I don't care. Like, you cannot go into the corner and basically avoid contact. Like, if he wasn't paying attention, he would have made more contact. Than if he was so, he, nurse. No, but nurse wasn't good tonight. Bouchard wasn't good tonight. Henrique on the one goal. Awful. I mean, just touch it. Just touch it. Like touch you have it. to be aware that if you don't yeah. touch it, it's a three on one. Like they just weren't mentally focused tonight. We were talking on the pregame show with with Cass. Like, hey, hometown. You want to show up? You want to play well? Maybe that got to them. Yeah, I guess. Do you but think like, that's ridiculous, or do you think that well, might be legit? More I, than half the team. Like they're. Toronto and Ontario guys. I think it, it. I think it. Yeah, okay. I think it could be legit, but at the Shouldn't same time, be. like you're going to want to show up in the playoffs too. And if a Saturday night in Toronto is too much for you to handle, how's Game Four against the Golden Knights going to be? Well, I, I want to. I don't know. I want to believe that this is a uh, reality check. And they probably extent. needed one. It's yeah. fair. Like it's not the end of the world, but there are so many things that they've done so much better recently. True. And then to just do this against Toronto on a Saturday night with the whole nation watching. Yeah. I mean, they should all be embarrassed, really. I mean, you just got you just got your show ran by Toronto and you showed up for the third period and oh, it was a lot of fun and everyone's cheering here thinking there might be a comeback, but that wasn't going to happen tonight. Like Debbie Downers, Norman Combine. Norman Combine's wife, wife doesn't want to leave. <laughs> no, and everybody's trying to get her out of here. It's amazing. I, know. <laughs> I think is that Brody that's being a Debbie Downer. <laughs> yeah. That's too funny. The boys are having a good time. Uh, listen, I, it's a tough night. Norman Combine's wife's having a great time. Uh, 780-218-9999. Lots of texts already coming in. I can see it. And then the nasty chat's always going. I do want to get to your quick thoughts really quickly. Uh, the back end was disappointing tonight, 100%. Yeah. Good to learn a lesson that you can't just show up for one period. That's They've been getting away with it talk, too much. We've talked about that at times this year. Also good to learn that you can't just put 97-29 together and expect magic, what you got. So uh, get back at Dusty, and he'll go back. And, he'll, he'll fight with you. Oh, d- just, definitely. I mean, yeah. people tonight were like, well, you're not saying nice things about Bouchard. And I'm like, Why? he's what? had a great season. I get it. But when he goes into the corner, he's scared. You can't tell me he's not. Like it's gotta it's gotta change. Like Listen, if that play happens in game one of a playoff series, it could change the entire series. 
Like it, yes. it, it literally could. So that has happened. Like that just that can't happen. And he has to know that that can't happen. He's had a bad week in the corners. Uh, I think back to that Colorado game with seconds left on the clock. He he doesn't yeah. engage McKinnon. McKinnon, who's a brilliant hockey player, one of the best in the world, makes a play. And guess what? I, I mean, I'll, I'll throw this out there as a hot take. Has he ever had a good week in the corners? Like, he has great weeks all over the ice. He's sure. a phenomenal offensive talent. Yes. His goals for and goals against differential are spectacular. Yes. I'm not arguing any of this. But in the corners, he doesn't want to engage. And, you know, I see people being like, he's a coward in the corners. I'm not going that far, but I'm saying, I mean, the evidence is pretty significant here that against yeah. good teams who want to pressure him in the corners, he doesn't seem to want it. That's it's that's not me making something up. It's legitimate evidence. So, Norman Kopai's wife, with cheers, Norman Kopai's yeah. wife, cheers. Look at that. She got the orange and blue nails going. <laughs> Absolutely tremendous. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine nine nine. I want to add something. I said I get a selfie. Sure. Oh, there's Jasmine. Jasmine, Jasmine from Jasmine's the hangout. In there. She's yeah, here tonight there too. There we go. So I didn't hear Tommy. I'm getting in there. All right. Text us. Seven eight zero two one eight nine 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 nine. Okay, I just want to say this about uh, Bouchard in the corners. Like, it's it's one thing to not engage, but I think now teams like Toronto did they put it there. Yeah, that's that's game planning, man. Well, if you go into a series against the Kings, Vegas, whoever, and if you say, "Hey, it's not going to happen every time," but if you put the puck into Bouchard's corner every time, and twice he decides to step away from the contact. That could end up in the back of your net. Yeah. So he does so many things great. But that just can't happen. No. He has to know it. I'm sure they'll be like, hey, see this? You can't do this. And I know there were other elements that like led to the whole play. But he could have eliminated it by having some sort of put a stick in there. Like he just Engage. he didn't do anything. Engage. So Engage. I mean, but it wasn't like Bouchard or uh the nurse on the first one. goal. Yeah. Henrik. Like it was I don't know if I necessarily say anybody really played well tonight. That's, so that's why I floated it out there. Maybe being in Toronto, such a big night, supposed to be uh, Hyman's fifth. He gets yeah, he got the one. Yeah, he got the one, which is great. But maybe that caught up with them, and maybe they were thinking too much about it. And I think it's a dose of reality for them. So we're gonna go into it. We're gonna get into some text and uh, nasty chats as well. I'm gonna start it off with this one from Sean Bell. Ah, Belzy, yes. My co-host on Hello Oh, I want to hear this. Yeah, he goes, my only two cents is in a game where the oil get pushed around, why is Matthias Janmark the guy fighting and sticking up for teammates? This is a former I mean, Oilers Belzy's thing. right. Like, when I saw him fighting, I thought the exact same thing right away. I was just like, why is Janmark fighting right now? I guess he did Max okay. Domi, he did okay. I mean, hell. Domi probably had a slight edge, but... I mean, he held in there, but he shouldn't have to hold in there. Right. Now, I mean, I'm not going to be like, where's Carrick? Because Carrick, Carrick will go. I mean, he obviously, but. It's hard to when you're on the bench. Yeah, exactly. He's not going to play. Right. I mean, not that Yanmark plays a ton either. True. They're on the same line. So, um, yeah, I, I, they just, as much as, well, I mean, Perry and Kane should be those guys who could do something like that. Oh, okay. They could okay. stir something up. And to be honest with you, I mean, just to add to what Belzy said, I think Belzy would probably agree with me on this one. Um, should have happened in the first two periods. When you when you were starting to get smoked. When you're down 3 nothing, go out and be like, hey, I don't care what you're doing. I'm going to fight you right now to try to change the momentum yes. of this hockey game. They just wanted to try to win the game in pretty fashion, and that just wasn't going to work tonight. It's simple as that. Yeah. Did, did I not see Chris Knobloch almost yell on the bench tonight? Almost. I might have missed that. It looked it's like gonna he was catch some, me a little off somewhat, guard if he was actually fired up. He seemed somewhat animated, and we don't really see you that. Know, He's very stoic by nature. That's probably a good thing that he was, like, because you're right. He just stands there, basically. Yes. The fact that he was even fired up tonight, I guess, it's could go a long way. And I would expect, I'll expect him to bounce back. Like, this is what they do. Like, this is why they'll go eight games and only lose one or two. But, I mean, the last two tough teams they played, they lost. Yes. That's just the, that's just the facts. Well, they get so. smacked. They, get, they got smacked tonight. That's as simple as that. Like, the score, the 6-3 thing with the empty netter, 5-3, sure. But 
they got smacked, man. Like that, that was garbage time for the Leafs and uh, the three goals Edmonton got yeah, good for then, them. What do they say? Score effects. Score effects. Score effects. Yeah, that's right. yeah. All right. Uh, scoring summary, by the way. Let's just go into the tail of the tape as well as uh, the game stats, and uh, we'll get to some text right away because people, I, I imagine, how's yeah. Nasty I mean, that's doing? it's pretty fired <laughs> yeah, up. Okay. I get it. Yeah, it says he was full out yelling. He did yell once yeah. on the knob log thing. As he should. Kane need and Hopkins need to get going. Hopkins can't drive a line when he's center. Yeah, there's a lot. You can okay, you know, let's, dive let's into Let's go into the summary. scoring summary here, and we'll get the text going. And obviously, Nasty Chat's doing its thing. Uh, Bobby McMahon is 12th of the year, uh, enjoying the freshly signed contract that he got from John Tavares and uh, Timothy Lilligren makes it one nothing 417 into this one. William Nylander adds to the Leafs' lead at 18-14. Two-zip Toronto after one. Lilligren with the sec uh, second assist of the night there for him. Second period, Pontus Holmberg, who had a nice period, makes it 3 nothing at 8.02 for Max Domi and Austin Matthews. Pontus Holmberg follows it up with his sixth of the season, second of the night from Bobby McMahon and uh, Riley, Morgan Riley getting in on the action, 4 nothing Leafs at 11.04. Then McMahon again gets his second of the night, his 13th of the season from Nylander and Tavares, 5-zip Leafs, 15.46 into the second period. Here come the Oilers, as they say, in the third period. Zach Hyman, hometown boy, trying to get that 50th goal, gets his 49th on the power play at 4.59 from McDavid and Bouchard. Do they have life? Is this the spark that they need? Well, maybe, because at 8.32, Corey Perry on a nice feed from Kane converts on the power play as well. His 10th of the year, McDavid, the secondary assist. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl will get the Oilers to within two with his 36th goal of the season. McDavid and Bouchard, the apples there at 16.21. Edmonton would throw everything that they could at the Leafs in the last six minutes, or five minutes, I should say. Pulling the goalie early, didn't matter. Austin Matthews unassisted into the empty net. His 58th of the season at 1947 puts this one on ice. 6-3 Leaves at the end of the night. Uh, shots on goal, 39-29 Edmonton. Faceoffs, 52.6% to 47.4 in favor of Edmonton. Power play, Edmonton, 2 for 5. PK two for three penalty minutes doesn't matter irrelevant hits 34 31 in favor of the leafs block shots 28 for toronto yeah. dusty so they were stacking the house uh 11 for edmonton giveaways officially 11 for toronto nine for the oilers takeaway seven for toronto five for edmonton all right let's get to some text here let's start it off with ooh, where do we want to go i mean oh geez there's so many i'm gonna i'm gonna start at the bottom look at this People are pissed. Uh, what is this? A keyword? <laughs> Almost. I love Dusty tonight, says Matt from Okotoks. Thanks, Matt from Okotoks. I love you too. <laughs> okay, let's go to Harry Manback. Sends in a gif with a lady getting plastered in the face. I don't know if we need to read yeah, that one. No, that's not good. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that's the one you picked? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, okay. Uh, this <laughs> one. <laughs> Oh, boy. Andy Pandy says, why is there never any urgency in the first period? It cost them huge again. Bouchard and Nugent Hopkins were so poor. It's time guys sit for shifts for not showing any urgency or making mental mistakes. Leafs outwork the Oilers badly for the first 40 minutes. No excuses and won't win with this back six. DeHarnay, Bouchard, Nurse, and CeCe were a train wreck at times. Quickly Andy off Pandy. of that one, the good Go news is Stetcher will play tomorrow. Oh, that changes everything. He's in. Well, I mean, he's, be, he's, he's better than the other two guys. I'm sorry. I know everybody's like, oh, CeCe likes everyone likes CeCe. I'm sorry. Stetcher's a better defenseman. It's the end of the story. CeCe tonight had that one shot at the blue line, fired it into the corner. Like, Cody CeCe is not as good a defenseman as Stetcher. I'm sorry. It's just, that's, it's end of discussion already. So you're going, you're Stet going there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, is, I mean, Cass, it's, is Cass it's on? It's not even good. Bring Cass in. He's Bring ready. Cass to, in. Let's get like, Cass on here right Bring now. Bring Cass in. It's there just he is. Look at Cass this guy. in there. Oh, Cass, tell me I'm wrong. Hey, we talked tell about me this on the pregame. Go wrong. ahead, Cass. I'm go, not wrong. Go, go, go. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. I'm not wrong. You tell wrong. me. You brought tell up me one why. Play. You tell me why. One play. So, so a. To me, it sounds like you're pinning this loss on Cody. No, I'm pinning it on Bouchard and Nurse. So don't worry about that. Um. Oh, then why are you all of a sudden like, oh, Stetcher's way better than C? No, he's not. No, he's better than Dayharnay too, in my opinion. So. 
Put him in either one. He's different Whoa. than Dayarnay. He's different than Day Arne. Now, if you if you would say play Stetcher instead of Dayarnay, fine, sure, go. But no, nothing. Well, that's what I mean. Like it'll be, it'll be. Who's this? Be? I don't know. This guy's just a random. He's, um, out. He's not happy. I don't know. I just I think Stetcher. I think Stetcher makes their blue line better. I don't care who comes out. I think Stetcher makes their blue line better. All right, Cass, your take on everything here because there's been a lot. Yeah, there has been. Um, you know, they 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 came out of the gate first shift, great first shift. Uh, power play killed their momentum, really immediately. Yeah, um, how crazy is that, hey? Eh? Y- yeah, they get that power play early, and I don't know if it was like you know guys that really wanted to get in the game all of a sudden have to sit and wait, and that can actually happen to a team. I mean, I would always, you know, going into a game, I'm like praying there's no penalties in the first four minutes. Right. I'm like, no penalties in the first four minutes. So you can actually get a shift there because if you're one of the guys that doesn't play as much or doesn't play on the penalty kill, well, you you maybe haven't had a, a shift for the first minute, minute and a half, and then someone takes a power, takes a penalty. Your team's on the power play. There's another two minutes, and all of a sudden you're sitting there five, six, seven, eight minutes without actually really being able to be engaged in a game. But it did really seem like that power play kind of killed their momentum. Like they they don't generate a lot on it. Toronto does a good job of shutting things down, uh, eating time up, clearing the puck, and uh, it really seemed like that gave Toronto a bunch of life. It gave them a bunch of jump. Like I, they, they all of a sudden were like, oh, okay, no, we're you know we shut the power play down. We can win this hockey game, and and they just kind of jumped all over it. Edmonton didn't didn't wake up after that point till the third, which is guys something we've seen. Um, and I, and I know you know people and, and someone said in the nasty chat, oh blame Skinner. The team start was great. Blame Skinner. It's like well, the I team mean, start wasn't great. You had one good shift, and then the start was garbage. Yeah, I'm not. Are you blaming Skinner for tonight? I don't no, think so. I had a few people ask me about him tonight, and I was like, well. I'm sorry, but there's like backdoor tap it, backdoor tappings cast again. Deflection uh, at the side of the net. Soft I mean, coverage in front of, in, in like the most dangerous area of the ice. Like I thought there were brain farts before pucks even got to Skinner. And by the time they got to the net, it was basically like, good luck, Stuart. You're on yeah. your own. Well, look, just, just look at the, the, the Evan Bouchard play in the corner. I mean, it, that's, yeah. What is, that, what is like, that? What is that? Like, I no, I, I, it looks listen, like he was trying to get out of the way. Like, I, that's what I he don't did. He flamingoed I, from there. I don't know. I don't know what that was. Um, I mean, I, I've talked with Laddie Schmid about this. It's like, you know, Evan Bouchard gives you such good things in the offensive zone and his patience and his calmness does, does great things there. In the defensive zone, sometimes it absolutely bites you. That was one of those. We haven't seen one in a while, granted, Tommy, a, a play like that by Evan Bouchard, but that was that was up there for plays this season. I mean, we, we can go back. I can't remember who it was they're playing where he pivoted to the outside of the ice. I think, you know. Uh, that Philly. reminds me of Philly, but Cass, and, and he had a terrible night against Minnesota in many early in the season. We had a yeah, watch party that night. We had a watch party that night, but Cass, like, if I suggested, I bought, I brought this up before you hopped on. I said Evan Bouchard's had a tough week in the corners, and I talked about that goal against uh, Colorado where he didn't even engage Nathan McKinnon. I I understand respecting a guy like McKinnon in the corner, but, like, I'm sorry. I'm getting the can opener in. It's the end of overtime. Don't let him make a play to the net. Yeah. So I thought Bouchard has had a terrible week in the corners. Yeah, been tough. Been tough. No, I I think that's a fair assessment. That, uh, that that was tough. Um, other thing uh, that, that we haven't brought up yet, and I didn't hear you guys talk about it, so maybe you brought it up before I, I joined the stream. Um, penalties and inopportune yeah. times in that first period as well. Bad penalties that you can't take. Stick infractions that you can't take. I thought that hurt them too. Uh, Tom Gazzola, Dustin Nielsen, Matt Cassian with you. It's the Oil Stream Post Game Show. Live on location, Hudson's White Avenue. It's been a lot of fun. Oilers didn't add to the fun, that's for sure. A 6-3 loss at the hands of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Zach Hyman gets one, not two tonight, as he sits at 49 goals. He'll look for that 50th tomorrow against Ottawa. Cass Belzy kind of started things on the text line. He said, my only two cents in it is in a game where the oil get pushed around. Why is Matthias Janmark the guy fighting and sticking up for teammates? Or just start running people, Belzy said. What would you say to to Belzy's thoughts there on on this one tonight yeah well i mean that's that's your Corey perry's evander canes um i mean great great by yanmark to, to throw down with domi um, domi's tough 
Domi's pretty tough. He's not very big. He's, he's no. a little guy. Um, yes. Feisty, he, though. He, he's feisty. He is feisty. Um, so, I mean, kudos to him for, for stepping up in that situation. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you like, especially when you're down a whole bunch of goals, to see some of those guys just kind of go, okay, you know what? I'm just going to start running people and doing something here. Um, Yanmark probably shouldn't be the guy to lead that charge. Right. Uh, you, you know, would have been nice to see Evander Kane do it. Would have been nice. You know, Darnell's it, it, one of your top D men. You don't necessarily need him doing it. But for some of the yeah, like groups, Kane, and, Kane and Perry are on the third line. Kane and Perry on the third line. That's, that's your what job. Do. Yep. Right. Like, that's your yep. job. Yep. They didn't Absolutely. do it tonight. Simple as that. Yep. All right, 780-218-9999. If you have uh, comments, criticisms, concerns, let us know. If you want to bounce anything off of Dusty and Cass, uh, fire those our way. Are you monitoring? You're going. You're doing Twitter right I'm now. I'm mostly just looking at Stoff's tweets. Oh. That's kind of what I like what to is, do. What is Robert well, saying? Stoff says uh, the Edmonton Oilers were an NHL best 37-9-3 over the previous 49 games. <laughs> As he always just tweets out yeah, like, okay. good things. Tonight Baseline. they were second best in virtually every facet through 40 minutes, which is what we said. Too late, too little, too late in the third. Uh, didn't match Toronto's physical. They didn't. They didn't match Toronto at any level tonight. I'll just no. add to that. Like here, I have an interesting one that comes in from R Dubs, and I'll bounce it off of Cass and Dusty. I mean, get in on it, obviously. R Dubs texted in said, "Hundred percent on the coach. He set them up to fail with those lines. Left them." Till well into the third period, Cass, what would you say to our Dubs? Yeah, um, I mean, hey, you could you could make an argument that he shouldn't have changed the lines up again, um, but it's not it's not like they were great the other day either. Uh, and and right. again, I I didn't mind him trying to switch to try to capitalize on some of the energy and the emotion for all the guys and to capitalize on the Zach trying Hyman. to get and, Hyman. Now. You know, you're going up. It, yeah, you're going up against a Toronto team that's pretty top heavy. You know, that top line really, really good. Typically, you know, with Austin Matthews in it, and you're kind of like, okay, let's see if they try to match us up here against the dry side McDavid line or who they give us and, and just try to overpower. Um, but I, hey, it's easy to look now and to criticize it and to criticize the move and to say, well, yeah, maybe they shouldn't have made a switch. 780-218-9999. You seeing anything, Dusty? I, I, or do no, I, I would just, no, I would just also add to what Cass said, like, Tommy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but have they juggled the lines either before or in game four straight games? It, I feel it. Colorado, automatically, Colorado, they did. Yeah. Montreal, there was tweaking. They did. Yeah. Buffalo, they did. Yeah. And then tonight they started with a. So they have not had, and I know they've had success in a few of those games, but like this has been four games. In a row, at least I haven't. I'm not even thinking back before Colorado, but it's been four games in a row at least that there's been like some line juggling, either necessarily or unnecessarily. This is something that Jay Woodcroft dealt with on a nightly basis as well. Yeah, uh, but he got criticized for it. Well, yeah. At, at now, I'm glad you point that out because and Cass like get in on this because at first. Chris Knobloch was being credited for keeping lines together, having patience. I'm not putting on this on him because he's juggling lines and switching things up essentially game to game, in game even. I think it's more of a tell towards his players. And now he's starting to realize the plight of the group that he has to deal with day to day. Is that a fair criticism? Hmm. I, isn't it fair to point it out at least, Cass? Right, like, it's, fair well, to, it's fair to point it out. Pointing it out, like yeah, it's fair to point it out. Um, because it's, it's becoming fair, more frequent. Yeah, yeah, I th I think it has been. Uh, with that being said, their record overall has been pretty good. Yeah, like it's it's not like they've been losing a ton of hockey games, as so, Robert alluded to. Yeah, so is it fair to point it out? I think it's it's fair to bring it up in the conversation. I don't think it, you know, I can't just jump on that train yet at this point and, and criticize for it. Now, is it something that we need to kind of keep in our, keep in our hip pocket if things don't go well and he's either too late to make change or he's making changes all the time and nothing seems to work. Uh, I think it's a fair criticism to hold on to. I just, uh, I'm not ready to say it yet. I, I would, I would add this. Like when McDavid and Dry are together, what else do you have? 
Like tonight yeah, they I had still nothing. Think they, they have enough. They have people who are capable. It's just whether or not they rise to the occasion. Yeah, but in a, in a in a playoff series against the Kings or Vegas, are you going to roll Nuge, McLeod, and Fogel out there as a line? That's I'm a not. Soft, that's a soft no line. No chance. And I think you know Henrik, Kane, and Perry. I don't. Yeah. I don't love it. I actually but you like can probably that. get away with it as a third line. Yeah, you might like it. I, I don't like necessarily don't I think, do. but um, I just think when you put all your eggs in that top basket, you know, the other baskets don't have much, I guess. I, I disagree. I think they have good players there, and I just it's a matter of them. But you have you up. have faith in McLeod and Fogel without dry settle to be a legitimate second line no, in the playoffs? You, you need you somebody can't do who it. You, that can't you, happen. You can't have those two without someone who can play rough and tumble hockey. Uh, and that guy, the guy that could be the mule on that line is Leon Dreisaitl. Yeah, exactly. Like, so if you're that's, gonna have, that's what makes it work. Yeah, if McLeod and Fogel are going to be in your top six, I got no problem with it if Dreisaitl is their center. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'll say that. Like, your other centers are too You out of here, Chief? See you later, man. It's the man in the chair. Wheels. wheels right there. All right, thanks for coming see on, later. my friend. See you later, man. Good to see you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night, buddy. All right, let's get into the uh, inbox and nasty chat here. Shaggy and St. Albert. This is a long one, Cass. Buckle up. Might as well copy and paste my previous comments from previous games. Once again, others don't show up for the most of the game. This game in a vacuum, you say every once in a while you have a stinker. Uh, them not showing up for the most of the game is a trend, and most times they get away with it. But against the high-level teams, they get spanked. Let me guess. Against Sens tomorrow, others will show up later in the game, maybe squeak out a win or even loss. Uh, what they should do is destroy the Sens, but this team will go with minimal effort again. Turned off the game after the second, missed the three goals. Not going to give effort to watch game if Oilers are going to give the half-ass effort like they always do. Sorry, quarter-ass effort. Once again, outworked by <laughs> opponent. 6-3 final is flattering to Oilers. Dusty can talk all he wants about Avs slash Oilers matchup being a toss-up, but Oilers will not even make it to the West Finals. I, I have a couple things to say really quickly. Yeah, yeah. We just watched the Oilers smoke the Buffalo Sabres. Okay. Uh, they'll probably win tomorrow. All right. And what was the other thing I wanted to get at? Uh, minimal effort. I don't know. Cass, what would you say to Shaggy? Shaggy's pissed off, and I get it. But yeah, yeah I'm not going to tell you to not be pissed off, Shaggy. I love it. Yeah. 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 Um, was it minimal? Was it minimal effort? You think, you guys? I think it was like, Cass. I should have asked you this earlier. Remember at, at the start of the game, you, you talked about it on Game Changers, all these guys being in their hometown. Yeah. Did that get to them? That's what it I suggested have. to Dusty. Yeah. yeah. I it, sure it hope they don't have. play the Leafs in a Stanley Cup final. Then. Well, that's. Get over. Me, it. That's one game. I mean, I, I, I think your your mentality is probably a little bit different. Um, your mentality is probably be a little bit different. I don't think it's minimal effort tonight. I just think they they played awful. Ner like I thought they tr I thought they tried hard, but they just they well actually maybe it maybe not because Bouchard on the goal on the one goal wasn't trying hard. Nurse on the first goal wasn't trying hard. So Henrik on the Cast. What do you think of Henrik on the on the one goal where he like went over? Yeah. It came out Should of the zone. The offside. Exactly yeah, right. Offside. So. That yeah, was a weird a one to me, yeah. too. So, I mean, they yeah. just shot themselves in the foot. Like, it's not like Toronto came out and took this game away from them. I thought they kind of handed it to them on a platter. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, I, I think so. I think you're right. They, it, it was a little bit of a platter served, uh, again, where they kind of let, after that first power play, they, they didn't generate anything. They let, they let the Leafs take over and they didn't really force the issue. Now, maybe in the third, a little bit, they start to, but by that time, you're already so far down that, yeah, it was pretty much a moot point. So, yeah, um, yeah, I don't know, guys. It was uh, ultimately a, an ugly game, and against yeah. the Leafs, who I love to hate, it sucks. SJ not in the Kootenai says cannot count on Nugent Hopkins for anything other than power play time. That is softest player in the league. This one. All right. You got your microphone yeah, on? Yeah, I had to cough. I all think. right. No, all good. You okay? Somebody was Actually, worried. it's my first cough. Somebody asked if you were doing okay with the cough. Well, Tommy, I'll tell you, I had an x-ray on Friday, and they called me back for a follow-up appointment oh, on Tuesday. So, But that being serious? said, if it was serious, they would have called me back like today or Monday. They, I, asked, <laughs> I asked the lady, I said, is this urgent? 
And she goes, it's not urgent. Oh, so okay. I mean, I'm not too worried. All right, Mr. Nielsen, you're going to be okay. Yeah. All right, this one here. Uh, Pickard can steal us a hockey game when the Oilers don't show up. Do you want me to read the well, other one? Well, I just, I know, well, no, I or just. Or is this like, like I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> to me, that's somebody saying like, go with Pickard instead of Skinner, which I just, I'm not there. I'm not sure I ever get there, but I love everything that Pickard's done. But I think there's just a difference between being the backup who can be really good and a starter in key moments. You know what I mean? And I like Pickard. But uh, I don't. I don't know if I'd say he can steal. Like the, if if Pickard's in net tonight, what, which do ones they is win? He saving? I don't think so. Cass, I don't think so. Like, I don't think. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think he's saving those. No, I don't think so either. He doesn't steal you that game. Like, has he been really good as a backup? Yeah, he has. But yeah, no, he's he's not stealing the game at all. Not a chance, guys. 780-218-9999. Tom Gazzola, Dustin Nielsen, Matt Cassian with you live on location. Hudson's White Avenue. The orders fall 6-3 to three to the Toronto Maple Leafs in a lackluster night for the orange and blue. And if you're going, how did Zach Hyman do? Well, he got one, not two. So uh, in pursuit of 50, he will look to get that tomorrow in Ottawa. This one from Randy says, how often do cup contender teams have to, quote-unquote, learn lessons Seems the Oilers have this click or excuse from Randy. Cass, do you want to get to Randy? Let me think on it. All right, we'll come back to that. We'll go to EA here. EA says, this has to be a wake-up call for this organization that being embarrassed on national television like this cannot be tolerated. It's easy to say it's a one-off or no time to think about it because they play again tomorrow. Sorry. This needs to be discussed. I find it truly baffling how they chose not to show up for a hockey night game against Toronto two years in a row. I have zero ideas how that's possible. Media is hyping up the game, a bunch of Ontario-born players on the team, and an egg. It wouldn't surprise me if Ottawa gives this team fits tomorrow. I like that one. From Jason? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe let me clear my throat. Oilers are so soft on the other team's stars. Jason, I like tonight they were. Yes, I don't think it was a rough ride. I'm trying to think like how were they at? I know they played well in regulation against McKinnon and Rantanen, but I wouldn't say they played hard on them. Like no. they they don't give guys rough rides. I think that's a fair take. Hey, Cass, don't you think? Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. And it's, especially if you look at how Toronto played uh, yes. Edmonton Stars for the most part. Um, and that's like, I mean, Edmondson in particular for a deadline guy, physical player. I mean, he, he had a great game. He had a great game. Um, they played, I mean, bunting too. There's everybody, like everyone was playing physical on Edmonton star players and Edmonton. I mean, can, can we, can you even think of a shift? We are like, Oh man, they really laid into nope. Austin Matthews. Well, Matthews like, no, is going to be sore when he goes back to the bench. Like, yeah, yeah. that's not a thing. They didn't, Pass. they didn't really do it. Cass, tonight, I'm going to throw it out. I'm just going to say it. Tonight felt like a TV turns slash smile yeah. and pose for the camera type of night. Yeah, kind of did. I really kinda did. Feel, yeah. Yeah, which goes back to that, you know, not understanding the, the text. I can't remember who just sent it in, the not understanding how this team doesn't show up on a hockey night in Canada. I mean, I, I thought yeah. they would. I think everybody thought they would, which is that's why it was hyped up. Yeah. You know, two very offensive teams, hockey night in Canada, a lot of Ontario guys, a lot of guys in their hometown. I mean, he thought that that's what we were going to see, um, and we didn't. I mean, they, they, they just were flat. Now, I don't think that automatically means they're going to get spanked by the Senators tomorrow. I don't think that's, you know, a wake-up call that they need to perform on national television games. I mean, guys don't... Whether games televised nationally or not, I mean, I, that part of it, I don't think is as big of a deal. Now, playing in Toronto on Hockey Night in Canada, yeah, that's that's a big deal. But yes, I mean, yeah, it was uh, it was set up to everything was there for the Oilers to come out and just to play a steady, great game and to play an exciting game and a full game. And they they were just whether it's squeezing the sticks or no momentum, they were they were flat and too many mistakes, too many turnovers, too many brain farts and. It, and at, at times, Toronto made it more difficult for them than Edmonton made it for Toronto. I can't think of a part of the game where Edmonton made it difficult for Toronto at all, to be honest with you, Cass. I'll just yeah. say that. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, I think you're right. Both of you guys nailed it. Like, yeah. 
It was it was, it was an easy game to play tonight for the Maple Leafs. Okay. Uh, I want to do this. Cass, are you in a time crunch at all today? No, I'm good. Okay, good, good, good. You want good. me to take off? I'll take no, off. No, no, no. Oh, I don't man. want you okay. to take okay. off. This I'll is stay. good. You're I'll fired stay. up. I'll this stay. is good. Right, You're not coughing. Everything's good. Yeah, no, I mean, okay, overall, the, the chest feels pretty good right now. Like, uh, look at this. Look I also feel like I look kind of thin in this shirt. Oh, you look great. I'm loving it. It's it a horizontal a stripes. shirt. Yeah, yeah. thanks, guys. If so. you're listening and not watching, Dusty looks very good right now. Thanks, Tommy. He's going to Cook County after. It's right down the street. It's right there, but might go karaoke or I might go home. We'll see. Okay, okay. The night is young. It's 829. It is early. All right, keep those texts coming in, 780-218-9999. Nasty chat, do your thing. We're going to get in there. Dusty's been monitoring it. Yeah, I got twi I got a but lot of stuff going in. What I do want – yeah, you've been, you've been on Twitter I'm a lot all over. Too, well, yeah. I do those three quick thoughts, yes. and then people freak out the entire time oh, of the replies. That's so. the beauty of it. Okay, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the Oilers locker room. Trev has Knobloch, Dreisaitl, and Nurse ready to go, and then we're going to go off of what their comments are. So we're going to start with – Chris Knobloch. Let's just go right to head coach Chris Knobloch. Trev, if you can roll it. Factors that led to a 5 nothing deficit in the opening 40 minutes. Well, I think uh, a couple things. We didn't capitalize on our early opportunities that we had in the first period, especially the McDavid line. Um, spent a lot of time in the offensive zone. Just didn't capitalize. And that uh, set us back. Um, and then we also had a couple power plays. And, um, you know, we don't capitalize on our two power plays they score on theirs and um you know it just uh, snowballed from there what's the primary lesson after a game like this uh, just we have to play hard the whole time um you know I, I thought we came out hard and just uh the mistakes that we made were too uh cost costly uh the you know just they're able to get that puck to the um the slot uh for the first goal against where we're all in good positions but just it's got to be harder for them to uh, make that play. So yeah, I think uh, tonight uh, we didn't make many mistakes, but when we did, they were they were big ones, and um, they capitalized on them. And you know, it was unfair for Stu. Just to, I'm not sure any of those chances he's going to have, but um, yeah, I think the chances we gave were too um, too big. All right, all right. I'm going to start with I agree with him about they didn't put Stu into good positions there with uh, Chris Knoblock. I'll agree with them that. And then I disagree wholeheartedly with him saying they didn't make too many m mistakes and the ones that they did make cost them. I, I'm sorry. I didn't think that they controlled parts of that game when it was still up for grabs. To me, to me, they, they watched most of that game. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty blatant mistakes tonight that led to if you if he, if he was so like yeah if he tried to hang that and he said you know he obviously had Skinner's back there if he tried to hang that on Skinner tonight you can't you're giving a free anybody who is is giving a free pass to a bunch of guys who just played very poorly in front of them yeah so Cass what do you take away from what Knobloch had to say unmute Cass. Classic, classic, classic cast. I, oh, I was the one that hit the mute that time. Did oh, I it was you. Mute? It was you. Oh, man. I'm just gonna bl blame it on Trev. It was Trev's fault. Blame. It oh, Trev. poor Trev. Yeah. He's working he's, hard. He's not going to defend himself. So, um, man. Um, yeah, I, I. It wasn't. I mean, it, it's kind of like deflecting a little bit, his answer in some ways with that, because it's like they. they in, in saying they didn't make too many mistakes, it's like, well, they did make too many big mistakes. Yeah. So, yeah, they didn't make like 80 million mistakes, but the ones they made were pretty big and cost them a lot. And I, I, I guess I don't understand the one out of position comment, like particularly on that first goal, because I'm like, you clearly were out of position because there's someone wide open by themselves in front of the net. <laughs> front of the net. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I mean, he's, he's going to obviously have to unpack it all and. And it's it's he's trying to yeah trying to sink the knee I guess a little bit with that one but yeah I, I don't know if I agree with everything he had to say there yeah I I I'm gonna say this I feel like his answer there was looking at a spreadsheet rather than the video on that first one yeah yeah I mean you gotta watch the, like a horrible play the <laughs> stupid horrible play yeah I don't know like, on the first goal I don't yeah it's unacceptable like. They're still a really good hockey team. They just didn't play good tonight yeah. in any fashion. Yep. So I, I'm interested to see what Leon has to say. All right, let's go to let's Leon. Leon, Leon to say. Maybe walk us through the, your, 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 I guess, insight on, on the game and what it was like for you. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a weird game, I thought. Um, you know, I think they probably capitalized on every single one of their chances, and um, we gave up a little too much the first first 40, and, um, you know, they did a good job of, like I said, capitalizing on, on, the, on their looks. Um, so, yeah, just gave up too much in the first 40. You had the chances early, though, um, to kind of get the game going in your direction. Yeah, I mean, we certainly did. Um, lots of looks in the first first ten, and then obviously lots of looks in um, you know the, the the last twenty. So, um, but it's tough tough to win any games when you give up five. So, something to clean up. Those games, you feel like if you had five more minutes, though, you guys were just pushing so hard. I got it. Yeah, I mean, you never know. They did a good job at the end, but um, yeah, may maybe I don't know. What's the messaging in the group after 40 minutes of play in terms of winning that period and maybe to take in some positive momentum? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly it. Um, just go out, play 20 good minutes and take that into, into the next game. and um, Yeah, just, just try and build something. I'm sorry, I'll say it. Third period tonight, I don't care if it was good or not. That I was mean, garbage time. I don't, I don't care if it's a positive. I mean, you're coming out of this game feeling like garbage. There's no way this team tonight's in the dressing room. Hopefully they're not sitting there going like, well, good third, boys. Like, that can't be the case. So I understand certain people have to ask positive questions, but, I mean, there's no chance they feel good about their hockey game because they scored goals in the third. And the other thing with Dreisler, I thought when he said, you know, they they took advantage of their chances, like they capitalized on their chances. They capitalized on their chances because the Oilers completely left them all alone in front or on odd man rushes, like, of course they're going to capitalize on those chances. Those are juicy, juicy looks. It's not like it's not like you shut them down and then you know they had like or somebody had a real nice snipe. I mean, you, you allowed these guys to be wide open in front of the net. So yeah, of course they capitalized on their chances because you gave them great <laughs> A plus. Great like ones. come on, like that's a lame answer. I'm sorry. No, no, don't be, be yeah. dusty. Don't be sorry. Yeah, cast. I mean, I don't. You taking anything out of what Leon said? There's no momentum. Sorry. No. No. Um, yeah, and I, and I, I, again, with the comment of uh, I didn't think they had that many chances. It's like, yeah, they did. They they had a lot of they, they had enough chances to score way more goals than you did. Scored. Yeah, I know. don't think they scored on every single great day they had. I might be wrong, no, but and, I don't think they, so. It, and even then, you know, even if it was on only the great A's, that's still five of them. Yes. And that's too many. So, yeah, and, I mean, I, I, I get it. They're going to try to move on quick. I think even that speaks to the mentality that they have, those post-game interviews where the, the conversation in the dressing room afterwards was probably like, hey, guys, we just got to move on. Yep, wasn't wasn't great, wasn't unreal. Um, we need to be better tomorrow, but let's get the heck out of Dodge. Bus leaves in 20 minutes. Let's go. Like, that's, yeah. that's I think, that's probably how the, the post-game went. Yeah, they know they left a foul stench in that locker room tonight. Uh, all right, speaking of that locker room, let's go to the last guy we're going to hear from tonight, and that's Darnell Nurse. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I sure didn't feel like it was 5 nothing going into the, the third. Um, you know, we gave them a little too many great opportunities and then found uh, well, they're a good team. They're going to capitalize off them. But, uh, you know, we, we bowed back there in the third and made a game of it. You got 11 guys from Ontario. I know it's always a big game coming home for everybody. Uh, disappointing to play, you know, maybe two of your not <laughs> do your worst periods in a long while. Yeah, no, you want to come out and win this game, obviously. Uh, but we didn't. Yeah. We move on to a, another one tomorrow. The third uh, period, like, at that point after two, does anyone say anything or you just you guys kind of know, hey, listen, we, we, can, we can maybe move some kind of third period? If not a full comeback, at least some momentum. Yeah, no, I think. Uh, for our group, we believe we're capable of anything in here. Um, you know, and we've been a good third third period team. So, uh, just didn't want to quit. Just want to show our group that we didn't want to quit, and um, that we, you know, we uh, we did that. And I guess I made a game of it in the end, but uh, we weren't good enough in the first part. What are some of the lessons you guys can extract from this game? Oh, just the attention to detail that it takes for a full 60 minutes as we come down the stretch. I think we, obviously we know, but. At this uh, at this point in the season, everything is heightened uh, to such an extreme as everyone gears up for you know the, the biggest part of the season. So um, that's that's what we take from it. Can you just describe the intensity level on the ice? It seemed to be a really intense, physical, um, emotional 
game. What was kind of your assessment of that? Yeah, no, I think uh, you know they're being uh, <clears throat> being hard on our skill, trying to you know be the same uh, the other way. So it was uh, it was a hard game. Um, a lot of physicality out there, but like we didn't uh, bring enough of it in the first forty to uh, be able to respond. So that's enough. Uh, you and I looked at each other again. Well, I mean, it didn't feel like a five nothing game going into the third. Sorry. I feel like it kind of did if you mm -hmm. watched. I mean, maybe different for guys. Cass, I mean, you played. I mean, we're watching it yeah, here. It seemed like a 5 nothing game to everybody who was watching it. Is it a different? Or is it just one of those things you say? Like, I think he's just saying that. Yeah. It definitely felt like a 5 nothing game for us. I think it definitely felt like a 5 nothing game for them. And, yeah, they, they did some okay things to push in the third period. But what do you expect was going to happen? Like, yeah. You you weren't going to come back from that. So, yeah. It, it, again, they're just saying this stuff. They're just trying to move on. They're trying to flush it. They're trying to forget about it because they got another game tomorrow, which is really where their heads are at. I mean, that's going to if, if I was going to sum up all three yes. of those interviews, that's that's it. Right? They are just yeah. their Whatever. minds are already moved forward. They're flushing yeah. it. They're moving on. They're thinking about tomorrow. To put a cap on it, they're not going, "Boys, that what we did in the third, that's where we're gonna keep going. Well, I was, I was just gonna hell. say, if slash when, because I do think they'll win tomorrow. If slash when they beat Ottawa, I don't want people hopping on Twitter and being like, "That's become of the third period against Toronto." That's not. They're gonna beat oh, Ottawa yeah. tomorrow because they're significantly better than Ottawa. Yes. It's not because they played well in the third period when Toronto was like, "As long as we don't allow six goals, we're gonna win this game." So that's like yeah. when they lost to Carolina, got absolutely pumped through forty minutes. Had an okay third period. People were like, guys, they can build on that third period. Yeah. No, BS. I don't. I don't they, they beat BS. Ottawa tomorrow. It's because they're better than Ottawa. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. It's not because of the third period tonight when Toronto wasn't nope. trying. Like, yeah, uh, I just, I appreciate the positivity coming out of the room. I understand. I've had to be the guy. Yeah, asking yeah. Those well, questions. that's the thing. Like those guys, and those guys are going to ask those questions because it's a tough spot to and, ask and those you questions. Get shit on if you don't ask those questions. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I have been. and the players are going to give you the most generic answers they're ever going to give yeah. you because I mean they just lost to Toronto. They're not happy. So tonight's, I mean tonight's post game comments. I wouldn't read really too much into any of it to be yeah. honest with you. They just want to get the hell out of there. Yeah, like, they're like they're done. They're saying. pissed. Like you don't want to. Hey, Nobody wants to talk to the media after you lose. No. Hey, guys, step up and have to do it. But, well, Cash, you can tell better than us. I mean, nobody wants to talk to anybody after a no. loss, right? Like, No, they just – they they want it. They don't even want to think about it. Yeah. Like, that, um, and that's where those all those comments, even from the coaching staff, they're like, all right, just get rid of this one. Just yeah. get rid of this one. You know, have my slice of pizza. <laughs> get changed. Get on the bus. Think about Ottawa. Like, get, that's where everyone's head's at. It, yeah. it really is. They just, that's, that's where to all be honest with you, that's where it should be at, too, though, right, Cass? Yeah, really. Yeah. I, like, yeah. No, it should like, be. Yeah, yeah. No, why, why overly focus on it and think about it too much? I mean, it, they be, have been winning hockey games. They have a pretty good record recently. So, yes. flush it and move on. Yes. 780 218 99 It is the Oil Stream post game show. Tom Gazzola, Dustin Nielsen, live on location, Hudson's White Avenue. Maddie Cassian, our game analyst, with us, and uh, YouTube Trap holding things down back at the ESTHQ. Cass, do you want to chew on a couple texts before we uh, move on? Are you cool? Are you cool with that? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's get to these. Uh, here we go. Liquid Beaver says, uh, "Where is this? Flush and move on." I think they wanted to put on a show and it just blew up on them. Maybe too much focus, trying to get Hyman to fifty. Bouchard, yikes, what a marshmallow. Taco says that Henrique giveaway was brutal. Uh, boys, I've noticed that the McDavid line has been scored on quite a bit lately. Thoughts? Cass, what would you say to, uh, to Taco there? Yeah, the Henry, Henry goal was, I mean, the, the one play, that was that was not smart. Um, the McDavid... That line have they been scored on? I'd, I'd have to look at the last couple of games, uh, at the last couple of games to see uh, from that standpoint. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think that line was great tonight. Um, I don't think they were able really to generate a, a ton, and I think that had a lot to do with the physicality. Um, and and Darnell Nurse did mention that the physicality that the Toronto played with, they made it difficult for the Edmonton Oilers. Um, has McDavid's line been giving? Well, I mean, too and I just I'm, I'm just looking back at like just 
I know this is like people don't want to hear it, but like McDavid's game log, three points tonight was minus one. So it was out there for a few goals against. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo, he, of course, saved brilliance. Uh, he was even, had two points, but he was even against Montreal, and he was minus two against Colorado. Dry said it was minus three against Colorado. So, I mean, those guys have been out. I mean, they're on the ice all the time. Yes. Goals are going to be scored against them. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I want to get to this one. Barry says, let's be honest, this was a rope-a-dope performance by the Oilers tonight. Everyone's watching, play bad, make everyone think they're bad, playoff start, win 16 in a row. Oilers are playing checkers while everyone is playing chess. Yeah, well, no, but you have to look like this is their second regulation loss in how many games? Whatever Bob like, said. Like, they're still, yeah, whatever Bob said. <laughs> like, Stoff tells us they're awesome. So they are awesome. The tonight, they are. I would, the thing that actually would concern me is in the last week, they played Colorado. Yes. And they played Toronto. Yes. Those are the two stiffest tests, and they lost them both. Yes. So, I mean, I think that's fair, and that's reason to say, on oh, the last week, the good teams they played, they lost to, and they beat the bad teams. I'd be so. I liked how they played cast against Colorado. They tonight. played a good game against Colorado. Tonight wasn't the tonight case. Tonight was no. not anywhere near where yeah. you need to be. Are you are you concerned, Cass, this late in the season with what Dusty brought up about you playing two good teams and then you don't get the result? You get one out of a possible four points. Like, Are you looking at that going, geez, this is becoming a trend? No. Or are you like, no, this no. is... No, I mean it, it's it's part of it. Listen, it's 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 more difficult to beat good teams. Yeah. And they and if if they lost to the bad teams, we would be all muttering about that. I mean, it's just kind of people will people will find something with that. I don't. I'm not reading into that too much. You you know, you're gonna really. It's like if you have a five and, and most teams at the top. I mean, if you have like a 500 or better record against the top teams in the league, you're doing fantastic. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're right fantastic. around there, right? Like they're, right, they're right. Yeah, they're right in that. So, yeah. Um, I I don't know. I'm not I'm not concerned about that, Tommy. Okay, no, that's fair. And you know what, man? Like. That question is going to pop up in situations like this, understandably. Like, so. I'm just, I'm at? just looking back. You know, let's just go back here a bit. Lost to the Leafs, good team. Buffalo, Montreal, non-playoff teams beat them. Lost to Colorado, but they played well. Just screwed up in overtime. Beat Washington. Washington may be a playoff team, may not. Beat Pittsburgh, non-playoff team. Uh, lost to the Sabers, non-playoff team. Lost to the Jackets, non-playoff team. Here, Boston Bruins. Nuge made that great play late. That they was, went two one yes. against a good team. Beat Pittsburgh, non-playoff team. Beat Kraken, non-playoff team. Beat the Blues, probably non-playoff team. And beat the Kings, who are a playoff team. So, I mean, they're playing mostly non-playoff teams and beating them. But, uh, you know, the last four teams, four times they played a playoff team, they are 2-2. Two and two. So, there's a 500 that Cass was talking about. Uh, I'll read this one from Dirty Curdy. Dirty Curdy, not shy to share his thoughts and deep dive a bit. He says, completely bullied the first 40 by McNoname and Edmondson. Perhaps Holland's guide and record book should have been more concerned with grit than handedness. Leon in his statue position and Nuge plain and awful on the most predictable and pedestrian power play tonight. All the effort and garbage time was just more PTSD from yesteryear. PK with barely clearing right on Leaf stick. This team has been playing mediocre for a while, and there is a clear lack of speed on this roster. Holloway? Peterson? Lane Peterson. What? Wow. What are the options to speed this roster up, Dirty Curdy? Peterson must have... Uh, he must have seen toe drag swag on Hello Hockey from that last. Was Peterson game. in there? He scored a beauty. God. Yeah, he won toe drag. Tommy, swag I'll be this honest. Week. I usually retweet it, but I don't watch it. <laughs> I am too busy. I, uh, Cass, there's a few things there that I'm looking at from Dirty Curdy where I was just like, okay. Uh, the one that, that stands out to me is pedestrian power play. I understand the tendencies. We know we watch every day with this team. But I don't, and I, I get frustrated watching the power play too, going to the same place, trying to go through the same seams, forcing yeah. a square peg through a round hole. But at the end of the day, I look at the power play and I go, top five. How do, how do you critique it? Yeah, it wasn't great today. I, I think pedestrian is actually an accurate 
Okay. Comment okay. on how it was, where, where they were pedestrian. There was a lot of standing around, and there was a lot of forcing plays. And we have seen with this power play, when they're good, they're not forcing plays. You know, they're taking what's given. They're taking what's there. They're snapping the puck around, and, and they're generating their opportunities. It's when they try to force it through the box and, and force creation that there's a problem. And, yeah. and I think that first power play kind of was indicative of the rest of the night of it, where it was just like, yeah, they, they, there was a lot of standing around. Yeah. There was a lot of it standing around, and it didn't look threatening. Uh, the beer league clearings on the PK uh, nailed it. <laughs> I mean, all in all, that's a pretty funny that. reference. Yeah, that's, that's pretty funny good. reference. That's what I'm like. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. Soft, soft clears on the PK. <laughs> we're sports, sports announcers. Uh, we're not cool enough to yeah, be DJs. We're literally and on DJs. the air right now. But thanks for What song, thank what song you, would yeah. you like us to play? <laughs> No, we don't do songs. No sorry. songs. Sorry. I like music. Would you but like we don't a do lanyard the songs. or a decal? Yeah. Would you like a sticker? Yeah, Have a for sticker. Sure. Take is... take one to your rude friend. Take one to your rude friend. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah, Tell you're welcome. Yourself. Have a great night. Dusty yeah, Nielsen, too. Matt Cassian, with you. We're live on location. Hudson's White App. All right, Cass. Uh, you're going into Ottawa tomorrow. How do you look at this one from an Oilers standpoint? I mean, you're flushing. You're flushing tonight. Uh, maybe double flushing. Uh, you flush it once. You wait till it fills up again. You flush it again, and you, and you move on. I mean, it's Jeez, a, that's gross, Cass. <laughs> hey, I sometimes they're double flushers, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know what? Just uh, just get rid of it and, and move on. And and you know what? Just uh, let's have a start. Yes. Like, let's let's have a start. Thank a sustained you. start, not just a one shift start, but a sustained start where everyone gets involved and, and get af gets after it right away. Well said, Cass. Uh, great work tonight, my friend. Catch up with you tomorrow afternoon. Sounds good, fellas. That is our boy, game analyst Matt Cassian, with uh, his breakdown of the Order 6-3 loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs, Tom Gazzola, Dustin Nielsen. We've been going for an hour already. We may as well yeah. wrap it all up together. Cruiser, what do we have left to do? Play gonna, of the game, save of the game? Save of the game, and I was just going to get to that right now. Also, I should add that... Uh, Check out Dusty on with McCord and Yukon every weekday morning on the morning show. Obviously. You got to bring some level of intelligence to that show. <laughs> oh, stop it. Those guys are they're brilliant. Three wonderful minds coming together. Although one of them is in a four-man CFL fantasy yeah, league. Yeah, which one is Bush. is in a six-man CFL fantasy Six-man league. league is where it's at. Uh, yes, uh, our dear friends over at 100.3 The Bear. Edmonton's best rock, and in the afternoons, go and listen to uh, Jess Jackson, who we absolutely She's adore a girl. and love. She is the best. So uh, catch Dusty in the mornings and Jess in the afternoons and say hi to Uke and McCord. So let's get to the uh, big save of the game presented by Christopher Boyle, business owner, tax saver. Chris Boyle strategically works with both businesses and families with strategic planning and risk management like a goalie protecting the net shielding your paycheck from unforeseen events like illness or hospitalization and ensuring your family's financial stability in the face of unexpected circumstances. So many big, important That's words. That's great, yeah. You know it's good. Uh, also, for a chance to win playoff tickets, scan the QR code in the corner of your screen or visit ChristopherBoyle.net slash show, and uh, you can get in on the craziness in the I, just, I just want to see if this uh, QR code works. I've, I've done Have it. you done it? It has worked. Yeah. I want to try. All QR right, codes. Do it. QR codes still blow my mind. Look yeah, at that. Look at that. And it shows up. And look at that. Look That's at this. Amazing. Look at that. YouTube oh, Trev YouTube is there. Look here. at him. What's up, boys? Hello, I would, not much, Trev. Thanks for asking. Yeah, of course. I was also wondering if the QR code worked because I'm like it looking works. at it. It, it looks so small. It goes right here. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. That's awesome. The big save of the game presented by Christopher Boyle. Well, I can tell you, there wasn't a heck of a whole lot of saves coming from the Oilers <laughs> end tonight. So, uh, yeah, we have to shift gears to Ilya Samsonov. And tonight, there is one save in particular that kind of was a little bit of a throwback. Uh, Warren Fuller, or no, it was uh, Ryan McLeod. He Kulak. passed it uh, back, it yeah. And uh, Brett Kulak shot the puck. You got some vintage, flashed the leather. So, it was a nice save. It was a nice save. Uh, that's that's pretty well all I got for tonight. There wasn't that many saves coming. Uh, kind of from... summarizes the goaltending tonight, doesn't it? Yeah, Drew? yeah. Like I, I was like looking. Yeah. I'm like, what can I what can I make out of this? And I'm just like, oh, well, there's one nice save. So, uh, yeah, it goes to Ilya Samsonov tonight. Good job, I guess. But uh, yeah, it was it was <laughs> brutal, brutal goaltending. Oh, but you can't really fault whoa, them. You really whoa, can't. Whoa, 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 you can't whoa, whoa. fault them. What? You 
brutal goaltending. You you yeah. can't. Uh, there was no big saves, is what I'm getting. There, oh, like, okay, okay, yeah, okay, like okay. no, uh, there wasn't there anything. Was, like Skinner got hung out. Yeah, there was, Yeah, he did, but there wasn't like one save. Where you're like, oh my god, he's true. keeping him in it. Like true, I true, get true. it. Yeah, sorry, Trev. No, you're good. You're good. All right, all right. But uh, yeah, Maybe that's all I got for ready. the save. All right, get ready because you got player of the game coming up right away. Ooh, it's good too. Like right now, should we read a couple texts first? Yeah, sure. Let's do a couple right, texts. Do a couple text. It's only eight thirty. It's been pretty spicy. Tube socks is. He's having a great Hey, night. I do want to say this. Huge shout out to like, I would say like 40% of this place are AM nasty style. I know. So this is this has probably been the best turnout we've had for a watch party. Like this has been awesome. <laughs> and people are ready to put in a shift. I'm not reading that one from Adam and Lloyd. How many? No, I mean, you had I don't no know. I feel like I've been dropping pretty reasonable takes. You've been great. No. I've been, I haven't had any six o'clockers. No, you've been good. I'm drinking double spice rum and diet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well said. Uh, I did talk to Sarah. Yes. And she said she's thinking of, she should probably bring in six o'clockers. Of course. Well, the they, other Hudson's has them. At, at Bourbon Street. Yeah. yeah. Steve and Adam, they were on top yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, people have been Sarah, asking for them. Sarah so. didn't know. Sarah didn't yeah. know. And Bottom uh, line is all yeah. Hudson's locations should have delicious beers. And they've got very, like, they've got a lot of delicious beers. Absolutely. But they might not have the most delicious beer ever. It's a six o'clock or longer. Amen. Well, well said. That is a great sell. Uh, okay. This one says Bouchard awful on that goal. Nurse pinch, not hustling back. Having it be a wide open guy in front to kick the game off was pretty bad. Uh, and then uh, this text also follows up with, uh, or texter says, Knobloch said they were all in good positions on first goal. Nurse was in neutral zone. I, I'd almost argue game. that Nurse on that one goal was worse than Bouchard on the other. Because, like, Nurse was just... Where was he? He Bro. was like... Like, Bouchard was kind of there and then didn't make a play. Yeah. Nurse wasn't even there to make a play. They were both... Away. Yeah, and I think they, like, Nurse has had... I think Nurse has had a decent season. And Bouchard yeah. has had a really great season. Offensively. But it's okay... Yeah, it's okay to criticize these guys, even if their game cards are terrific. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll just say it. They, they, no, that's fine. It's it's fair. You can't be like, oh, well, he's put up this many points this year, so he's allowed to not make a play in a corner. If you have that mindset, you're not winning anything in the big scheme of things. Yeah, no, you you're win right. 60 We're... bloody regular season games, but you're not winning what really matters if that's your mindset. Garth Vader, great name, says, uh, if it wasn't back-to-back, -back, I hope Knobloch pulls Skinner sooner. Clearly need a change. They look good with Pickard in that. Do you think Dry Settle and McDavid are together tomorrow? No. No, I don't think so either. Yeah, no. Just you got to go and crush. You have to go crush Ottawa tomorrow. No more playing around. No more favoring one guy to get his 50th. He's going to get his 50th probably anyway. He will get so, it. Yeah. He's, he's been crushing it this season. I would assume the family follows to Ottawa for 50? I think so. And it's easier to get tickets. It is easier to get tickets. <laughs> really um, good seats. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I do want to get to this one. I kind of wish we kept cast, and I got to this one earlier, and I totally blame myself. My fault. But this text says, what is with Kane over the last two months? He seems disengaged, not even body checking, getting in scrums as much. Also, Dry and him were heated with each other on the bench tonight. Not sure who's calling BS on who, because Dry and Kane were junk tonight. I mean, I'll just say that doesn't surprise me that they were getting at each other. But valid point on who was mad at who. Because neither of them were good tonight. No. Uh, and with Kane over the last two months, I'm sorry, but three assists in a month is not good enough. And that's Evander Kane. It, it's line. not just not good enough. It's completely unacceptable. No, you are paid to produce million. offense. You have to produce offense. I don't care who you're Five playing million, with. Probably. You got to produce offense. Yeah. Uh, when the motor's running, because he decides he wants to turn it on, he is an absolute game changer when he's not engaged. But when was the last time we saw that? Early in the season when the team sucked. Yeah, like, and that's he was good. he was great early in the season. Yes. And, and that's, it's just I, not there. I don't know. The, like, on the oil stream in the afternoons, on the morning show, or, or on Hangout, I gave him, and even on the pre and post game, I gave him the benefit of the doubt for being banged up. Yeah, when he was. Yeah, for about a month and a bit. Like. I gave him, I gave him that great. Me personally, like, but this last two month stretch, not good. I would, yeah, yeah. And we said, and I said on the All Stream Friday, that 
I would still probably give him more minutes in the playoffs. Like you're, if you're if gonna, if you're gonna have success, something. Kane has to be going in the playoffs. Yeah. He just has to be. Not lately, that's for damn sure. All right, let's go to uh, the next order of business, and that, of course, is the Damon Bunting Remax Lead Player of the Game. Damon Bunting, consistent top producing realtor in Greater Edmonton and among Western Canadian Remax realtors. He and his team would love to help you find that red home or make the move from your current home. Community driven. He understands what it makes takes to make a difference in our city. Check him out, DamonBunting.com. Visit his Instagram at Damon Bunting Real Estate YouTube. Trev, go for it. Okay, boys. Well, there wasn't a lot of Oilers that showed up tonight. I will say honorable mention to one Oiler, former Oiler. Uh, he made his debut in uh, Hockey Night in Canada tonight. So shout out to Luke Gazik. Yeah, he did pretty good. It was solid. Luke, uh, it was solid Luke, listening that's to our him. guy. Yeah, yeah, yes. that is our guy. So he's an honorable mention. Probably the best Oiler tonight, honestly. But we're gonna keep it Edmonton themed. It's gonna be Bobby McMahon. Uh, he's Wayne Wright. He's you know right near uh, Edmonton. So he he had a hell of a game. Three points. Just looking at his numbers he's on pace to play just over 50 games but he's on like if he played a full season he'd be right close to 50 points and this is his first real crack at the mccann uh, no, that was that was a far fetch there but anyway uh two goals one assist <laughs> plus three tonight he looked really good he almost burnt uh Evan Bouchard for Hattie tonight, which would have been crazy. But, yeah, he was all over the puck tonight. I thought he had a solid game. So, he is your Damon Bunting, player of the game. Good job. Yeah, by buying or selling, Damon Bunting's your guy. Absolutely. He's really nice. Triple www.damonbunting.com. Uh, as I tweeted earlier, you cannot stop Bobby McMahon. You can oh, only no. hope to contain him. Oh, my God. And, unfortunately, tonight, they didn't even contain him. <laughs> that's, like, that's like Ryan McLeod dropping two on you. Come on. Like, that's tough. Bobby McMahon has had a very big impact on the Leafs so far this season. Yeah, have they, man, have they needed him, eh? Like, they, but they'd be, like, but, like the Leafs honestly, legitimately like, love, that's a needed great Bobby story. McMahon to step yeah. up. The yeah. Oilers need a Bobby I mean, no, Listen, but they do need a Bobby McMahon. They have a good team. They played, like, absolute dog poop tonight. Ooh, strong language, Tommy. <laughs> I've start, I I dropped an S-bomb earlier. I know. And I, feel, I know. I, I hope ashamed. Marshall wasn't listening. Marshall? We don't use those words. He was in bed at 730. Oh, don't okay. worry. Thank God. But uh, overall, Dusty, like this effort tonight was, I don't know if it was the yips got to them because they were playing in Toronto and everybody was super excited or that they thought that they could go around there and do TV twirls and do uh, whatever like, they wanted with the Leafs. They got, they had school tonight. I know we had some hot takes and the players who were in error tonight deserved them. A hundred percent. But they're still an awesome team. They're going to probably win tomorrow. Yes. And when's the next time they play? Let's see here. Just a sec. I want to see. They get Winnipeg at the okay. end of this trip. Is that at the end of the trip? Yeah, right after on Tuesday Yeah, that's night. right, on Tuesday night. And then they get the Kings. Yep. So. Wake up. Yeah. Like, don't go Simple and lose that. to Winnipeg on Tuesday because then that's your last three tough games. And Winnipeg lost again today. And they play tomorrow. Yes. So they're going to be on, like, four and six. So don't lose to Winnipeg simple as that play a better game thank you richard there's richard dropping off a beer now see this was great having you on oh look at this oh, Who's this guy? i'll be honest i'm not i'm not surprised eric hasn't left yet he usually ghosts out of here about an hour and a half ago he's not ghosting he might be asleep right now i'm not <laughs> he, sure his body's awake but his well, mind he isn't. started at hudson's yeah. at uh bourbon street around two o'clock today he's so. just happy canada qualified for copa America. yeah we watched that i yeah, got there, there it was get in here i got there and it was nil nil Say but they ended up winning. Look at this guy. There, there he is. is. The legend. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Eric. Eric. He's having a night. All right. You can leave now, buddy. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that guy. Um, listen, the Nasty's still here. Our our boys are here. Awanix here. Uh, Jay Milne. Evan, Evan Dom and Hernan Salas. Yeah, Hernan. From the Edmonton Elks. I didn't even think Hernan was going to show no, up. So, no, here's the thing. Here's the funny thing with Hernan. So Hernan was with us at Bourbon Street. Yes. Watching soccer. Came down here, was here for about the first 30 minutes, then had to go to his girlfriend's sister's birthday party. And Angelica's here now. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but because he tells me, he goes, he goes, I don't think I'm coming back. I said, I know you, and you're coming back. And when he rolled back in here, there was a huge cheer, like the Oilers just made it 5-4 or something. Wow. So he made it back. Connor Hood from the University of Alberta is here. It's yeah. a nice Quinn, Quinn Phillips, Phillips, the commission is here. She's having a um, great Saturday. It's, yeah, it's been a fun, it's been a fun little evening. Yes. And it's only, what is it? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Perfect. 
Man, uh, listen, people are fired up after a, a bad performance by the Oilers. Uh, we'll Look at Tam. She's watching right now. She's watching. Oh, she's watching yeah. us, and she's wearing these hideous socks, <laughs> but she's watching us. Hi, Tam. She said, uh, "Your boys in watching good you. Have a good night. Love you. Oh, I love it. Oh, love you goodness. too, Tam. Thanks, Tam. <laughs> uh, and tube socks. Steve is sending us pictures. He's His having- name's Steve? <laughs> <laughs> He's nasty club member. I know, number one. I know. Number one. I know. We're having a great time. A huge thank you to Sarah and Connor and the entire staff here at uh, Hudson's White Avenue. To everyone who showed up tonight, we really appreciate you. I ran of I ran out of our GCs. Look at these GCs. These we are had extras. to get Hudson's GCs. We got more, and we have more coming. Uh, J Mill ESD glue guy made it happen, and uh, you know what? Uh, even though the order is lost, you can still have fun on your weekend in the first weekend of the That's a great message, Tommy. Yeah. It is. It really is a Positive great message vibes. to pass it along that don't let the Oilers ruin your night. Don't. Not it's not the time for it. No. But if That's they win in a month or two from now. Allow them to like make your night even better. Boost you know, it up. Like, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Uh thank you for sticking around for the entire post. Thanks, man. Show. I was planning on popping in for about ten to fifteen. <laughs> no. So but you that were great. Was fun. You fired up. Thanks, uh, Tom. Appreciate that. Thank you, Dustin. <laughs> uh, for Dustin Nielsen and Matt Cassian and YouTube Trev, I'm Tom Cazola. As always, thank you for listening and watching the Oil Stream post game show uh, once again to everyone here at Hudson's. Fantastic. And we're going to do this again next month. You nasties or something else, the, the name, you guys certainly live up to it. Uh, all right. The Oilers fall 6 3. The Leaves. We're back tomorrow. Oilers and Sens. Uh, that game starts at 4. We're on the air at 2 30. Until then, ciao for now. Have a great Saturday night. Be safe. Have fun. See you tomorrow.